All right, we're back with the maple syrup evaporator, the cinder block evaporator here. Let's see how this thing works. So since the last video uh, where I built this version 1.0 of the uh, cinder block evaporator, I have made some improvements off camera, um, did some upgrades, and uh, I'll show you what I've done here. I'll go through the whole thing. If you haven't seen the original build video, um, go ahead and check up in the uh, upper right hand corner of your screen, the uh, eye there. You can click on that and I'll put a link to that uh, previous video there. Um, this is a uh, maple syrup evaporator. Some people had asked last video, what is this thing for? This evaporates the sap from maple trees and uh, evaporates the water out of it, leaving higher sugar content, which is what is left with uh, maple syrup. Uh, we're going to be doing a pretty large maple syrup operation here. And so I have built this very inexpensive, very basic kind of starter evaporator. So let's dig in and I'll show you some of the improvements I made and some of the changes. And then we'll fire this thing up and see how well it works. All right, so we'll start with the, the most obvious thing. Um, I raised the pan up by four inches. So um, Home Depot and, and all your home centers, they're gonna sell several different styles of cinder block. One is like this one here. It's a solid, it is uh, four inches deep by eight inches wide by 16 inches long. So this matches exactly the footprint of a regular cinder block and uh, it sits right on top and fits you know the same footprint this is exactly eight inches by 16 inches here so so eight inches by 16 inches this block those fit right on top of the um, this was the top of it before and so i added that four inches there lifted this up and then i had to redo this gap here where the valve comes out this is all kind of cemented in but i think this works out pretty good it keeps the heat off this valve and everything still, still works really well so so raise the, the uh, pan up, and the reason I did that was because my vent pipe here, I didn't realize how far the sap pan sits down. It, it sits way down inside this, uh, um, inside the, uh, the stove here. And so before, it was actually blocking half of my stove pipe on the inside. So now that has been corrected and lifted up, and so the bottom of the pan comes just to the top of the stove pipe. So we have that full um, draft and full stove pipe vent available for the uh, smoke to get out. So on the outside here, we have the, uh, the stove pipe and it's, it's about, I don't know, probably a good three, four feet, maybe four feet above the roof of the greenhouse there. Now this is all stuff that I found in the woods. Um, all these pieces of pipe I actually found at the back of our property. Somebody had just dumped back there in a pile. And uh, so I reclaimed some of these pieces and kind of hobbled everything together. That was some stove pipe that came with a stove that I had bought. And so I tried to keep the uh, double wall or triple wall stuff um, down here to hopefully help keep that heat um, at the bottom of the chimney here uh, to help keep that draft going up. And I put the single wall stuff up there and then that there's a single wall piece that goes through into the evaporator there on the inside. So only 190 in the whole thing and pretty good amount of draft there seems to be sufficient. Uh, I did test this the other day and the smoke and hots and all that stuff stayed well away from the greenhouse plastic. Uh, I never saw any sparks or anything like that come out and it seems to be pretty good. The wind blowing across the field keeps going this way. Um, so it, you know, it did pretty good like that. That doesn't seem to be a concern and uh, hopefully won't have any problems with the plastic. Um, you know, getting holes in it or anything like that. Uh, we'll just have to see how it goes this season. So most all of the other changes were done at the front here. So if you'll notice, I kind of redesigned this and this is gonna be just temporary for this uh, maple syrup season. Uh, I will probably change this to something better and more permanent with maybe a good piece of metal that covers the whole entire front here, an actual wood stove door or something like that that's removable. Uh, but this is what I came up with with what I had available, with, which is basically just cinder blocks of various kinds. So the uh, vent before you saw was actually just the two cinder block uh, holes, uh, the two cinder blocks that are laying uh, horizontally where the air could go into the stove at the bottom there. And I've actually covered that all up 
and put some dividing pieces in there to divert the intake air up to this cinder block right here. And that just allows me to have more positive control over it. So I can actually lay this brick on top so I can very easily cut that airflow down and just leave this brick sitting right on top of this. If I want to shut the whole thing off, this will starve it of air. It can't suck in any air that way. I sealed this up a lot better so that everything kind of seals up to the pan and there's not a lot of gaps. There's a couple um, little spots and things like that, but um, it still works out pretty good. These two bricks just kind of sit in here. They slide off to the side and then this folds down, which allows access to the burn chamber. Um, it's not a very large entrance here. And as many have noted, I cannot get the grate out that's in there at this point because I've kind of cinder blocked the front of this in. Um, these actually aren't really cemented in very good so I can take these two off and this one right here would come out as well and I could get the grate out if I had to. Um, a lot of people also mentioned the grate in there that's made out of fencing probably won't last very long under extreme temperatures. You're probably right. I can't imagine that it's going to last this season and when I get some really hot fires in there it'll probably give way. That's fine. Um, the reason I used that was because number one I ran out of drill bits when I was trying to put the fence posts, drill the fence posts in um, to make the side frames. The drill bits were just burning out. That's pretty hard steel. So uh, I decided to go with fencing in here. If this does give out I can cut a few more fence posts and throw them in there um, from one end to the other and uh, create a, a, some type of a grate. Um, if not, I'll just have the fire, it'll just be on the bottom and that'll be fine too. So I don't know how well you can see in there, but the stove pipe has full access now at the back. And so we got a good, good draft uh, coming out of there. Um, the, with the way I have this set up right now, this, uh, this brick that slides in, and folds up it really seals this off and then I can slide these bricks on this just keeps this from falling open and allowing flames to come out or something if it's unattended for some time but that whole front is sealed up really well now so the only way that the air can get in is here through my my intake and that allows me to control this fire very well the draft still isn't great, and I'd like it to be a lot better. And so I have tinkered around. I found a few fans. I may actually add a piece of cement board here with a fan on it, or just add a fan that I can put right into this hole right here and uh, blow air into the fire that way. And so we'll see if we can get a little better draft. But let's get a little fire going in here. I'll add some water to the pan, make sure we can get something in here to evaporate off. And uh, we'll see how well we can get some water steaming and boiling in here.
Well, there's definitely kind of an airflow issue when I have both the lower vent and the door open here. That fire really, really got roaring and uh, we're boiling now. Um, when I had the vents closed, or when I closed the main door here, I was keeping an eye on the temperature and it did cool down quite a bit. I also notice a lot more smoke escaping in here. When I close this, there's, we're getting a lot of kind of leaking of smoke out here. So some things I still have to tweak a little bit and work on. I definitely don't want a lot of smoke entering the greenhouse. That's something I'll have to keep an eye on. I've got the carbon oxide detector in here, so I should be good. It's pouring rain outside, so it's like camping. Sounds like we're in a tent. And there's just a just a tiny bit of moisture in the air in here. It's actually, none of that is smoke. Um, it's uh, <laughs> just water vapor, but man, is it is it thick. So we're gonna have to get some windows opened up in here when we're boiling and, and a fan or two, I'd say. <laughs> can't see anything in here well I guess we can officially say that it works it works very well and uh, a few adjustments a few tweaks I might play around with a fan uh, here to get that fire burning a little bit hotter and uh, just kind of figuring out the airflow issues I just if I could get a better draft in here I think it would uh, would work a little bit better um, but I'm fine once I have ventilation here I'll be able to open up all the airflow all the vents here uh, in the front the door and the, the lower vents and uh, let that fire just rage in there. So uh, right now I had about 10 gallons of water in there. It took about 45 minutes for it to start to boil. And that was just with me kind of playing around with it. I didn't have it loaded too full. I didn't want to waste a bunch of wood. So I have been stacking and splitting and, and cutting wood the last couple days, trying to get a good uh, start here for uh, maple syrup. I also have my outdoor wood burner I'm trying to keep up with. And so uh, a lot of wood processing going on around here. We are officially ready to start boiling some sap here in this uh, in this evaporator. And uh, man, is this thing great. It's just completely cool to the touch on the outside. There's no heat. Um, the smoke is really contained. It vents really well. It keeps the carbon dioxide out of here. And uh, it seems to be very safe. And uh, a lot of the concerns that I had and many of you guys had uh, with things all seem to be, uh, you know, it seems to be a pretty safe operation here. So, so what do you guys think? maple sap evaporator version 2.0 and uh, this one seems to be working better than the than the first version just a little little tweaks and upgrades here once I got this thing going I was also starting to think this might be kind of nice to have in the winter time um, I could put a bunch of storage tanks of maybe some 55 gallon drums in here and actually circulate water through this and store all that hot water in here in some 55 gallon drums and heat the greenhouse with this uh, and that hot water during the day and then overnight that would uh, you know get through the night so um, I may, may consider just leaving the evaporator pan right on here for the uh, winter time and using that to, to heat water so we'll play around with that idea uh, next year when the winter when winter heating season comes about around again so as always guys I appreciate a thumbs up on the video. Reach down and hit thumbs up. And there uh, will be lots of videos coming out this week and next on maple syrup stuff. So stay tuned for that. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.